Hi Stories channel here. Today, I'm going to tell the story of a 2017 Japanese movie called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, Chapter 1. We open up to a man, Katagiri, who is dining on a birthday dinner. Suddenly, the police arrive and knock on the door. It is revealed that Katagiri has tied up some people there and killed one of them. The police knock down the door, but he has already escaped. As he escapes, another man stops him and shoots him right through the neck. The archer congratulates him on being chosen and leaves. Katagiri wakes up and moves a burst of water. Later, detectives try to question him, but he kills them with rainwater. After that, we have an anime opening. We then see a high school kid, Hirose Koichi, set up his manga and anime poster and then leave for school. He moved to the city, Moriyocho, only recently and is excited for what lies ahead. On the way to school, some kids surround Koichi and demand money from him. Just then, another high school kid passes them. The bullies insult his hairstyle and he gets kinda offended. He reveals his power and punches them into another panel. The power of the stand, crazy diamond. These poor stupid bullies have no clue at all. His stand cannot be seen by anyone and Koji is confused as to what happened. I think he just realized that he's not the main character. The actual main character tells the bullies never to insult his hair. When he leaves, their noses go back to normal. Koji recognizes him as Higashikata Josuke. Koji then picks up his broken bike, but it's somehow normal again. At their classroom, Josuke does the anime stare out of the window while Kochi's classmate, Yukako, gives him some English revisions to do because she's responsible for helping him as he's new there. Kochi is shocked when he realizes that there is too much to do in just one single day. Yukako, however, does not care and gives him a nasty look. I'm starting to think that Yukako is a dorodere. We then see two men playing around and Katagiri stuffs one of them with water and kills him. Elsewhere, Yukako and Koichi are walking together when they see some girls fangirling over Josuke calling him Jojo. Before leaving, she leans a little too close to him with those crazy eyes. Yukako is starting to descend from a dorodere into a yandere. Koichi, run away from there! We then see that the police are at the scene of the recent murder and the other man has gone mad and taken a girl as a hostage. Koichi and Josuke are also at the scene. Josuke is about to leave but the man insults his hair, so he comes back. Seriously, what is everyone's problem with that beautiful hair? He then stabs the woman, but the knife comes out of his back. Josuke's stand is what caused this, but of course, no one can see it. When he checks his body, the hole is no longer there, but the knife is inside him. Suddenly, the man has a seizure, and the water in a human shape comes out and escapes. Josuke is shook to see this. When the police arrive, he runs away. Katagiri is also nearby and vows to kill Josuke for getting in his way. Later, the policeman from earlier, Officer Masaya, goes home and punches Josuke on his head. Josuke is his grandson. Josuke's mother comes and they inform her about the incident earlier. Elsewhere, the archer appears in front of a man and shoots him. When the man does not wake up again, the archer expresses his disappointment. The next day, Kochi almost falls from his bike, but a strange power brings him back up. It's... Jotaro Josta. He asks him about Josuke, so Kochi goes to Josuke and introduces him to Jotaro. Jotaro says that Josuke's father is a man called Joseph Josta. He mentions that Josuke was born after his parents were divorced, and so Joseph knew of Josuke just recently. Jotaro asks Josuke to forgive his father, Joseph. Jotaro reveals that he himself is Joseph's grandson, so that makes Jotaro Josuke's nephew. Phew, are you keeping up? Because I really hope so. Jotaro admits that the whole thing is bizarre, but says that everything will make sense. Jotaro says that Joseph's affair with Josuke's mother caused an uproar in the Jostar family. Josuke is respectful and asks for forgiveness. Just then, his classmates fangirl over him and interrupt their conversation. Jotaro accidentally calls his hair stupid. Of course, Josuke gets angry and uses his stand, the crazy diamond, on Jotaro. But Jotaro punches it back injuring Josuke. Jotaro then explains that their power is called a stand and only stand users can see it. Josuke doesn't care about it and is only concerned about his hair. He attacks Jotaro with his stand, but Josuke stops time, gets around Josuke and punches him. Still, his cap has been cut and then rejoined. Jotaro is curious as to the nature of Josuke's stand, 
Josuke, on the other hand, does not want anything to do with these things and leaves. Later, Jotaro calls his grandpa Joseph and tells him what happened. At Josuke's household, his grandfather brings up the recent murders. Still, he thinks that their town will go back to peace soon. He then tells Josuke to be careful as he once almost died when he was 4 years old. Josuke promises to do so and combs his hair. After his grandpa sleeps, Josuke asks his mother about his father. She says that she still loves him and that Josuke looks just like him. The next day, Yukako stops Koichi and they walk together. She asks if he noticed something different about her, but he makes all the wrong guesses. Apparently, it's her nails. Just then, something strange happens and he's teleported back a few paces. He gets spooked out and notices a strange man eating candy nearby. Yukako also stares at the man. Meanwhile, Jotaro looks over what he knows about Katagiri, apparently also known as Angelo. They deduce that Angelo's stand allows him to control water. When Josuke gets home, he sees his grandfather working hard to protect the town better. Angelo, meanwhile, has stalked Josuke to his home. He sends his stand, Aqua Necklace, to kill Josuke's family. When Josuke's mother drinks some water, he notices it moving strangely. So, he reaches into her and takes the water in a bottle. His mother has not realized anything and leaves. Jotaro then shakes the water and Aqua Necklace struggles. He calls Jotaro and tells him what he's got. Josuke shakes the bottles up more and we see Angelo also struggling because of it. Later, when his grandfather looks for some alcohol, the water stand turns into a whiskey bottle. His grandfather takes it. Josuke realizes what has happened and runs to his grandfather's room. However, he is lying on the ground with a big wound on his chest. Jotaro also arrives just then and Josuke says that he'll fix the wound. He uses his stand and reverses his grandfather's wound and blood. Downstairs, water is overflowing all over the house and a voice asks Jotaro who he is. He then attacks Jotaro and Josuke. Jotaro stops time and gives it the Angelo's stand disappears. Josuke admits that while he can heal others, he can't heal himself. They have to be careful as water is all around them. Suddenly, the kettle boils over and releases a deadly steam. To avoid it, Josuke smashes a wall and after they enter, he fixes it. However, there is a humidifier in that room, filling the room with invisible water. It punches Josuke and enters him. However, Josuke had earlier cut up a glove. He captures the stand in it and restores the glove, which he pukes out. He then shakes it around. They go upstairs, but Josuke's grandfather does not wake up. Josuke had thought that he could heal this, but now he realizes that he can't bring people back from the dead. They go to Angelo and Josuke shakes him around using his own stand. Jotaro asks him the origin of his stand. After a little persuasion, he tells them about the archer. Angelo says that he may be a killer, but Josuke is not. Josuke promises that he will never kill, but he will punish him as he sees fit. Josuke activates his stand, Crazy Diamond, and gives him the Dora Dora experience. He breaks the rock and fixes Angelo to it. Angelo will live on forever like that now. Much later, Josuke sits in his grandfather's room and goes over his reports. His mother comes and talks about how he was a true policeman who only cared about protecting the town. Then, they go to his funeral where Josuke's classmates have also come. At the funeral, he sees the archer who smiles creepily at him. Josuke follows him to a strange mansion. Koichi also arrives and offers to join him. The other man from earlier comes and kicks Koichi and the archer shoots him. While he struggles, the man introduces himself as Nijimura Okuyasu and shows them his stand, which he calls the hand. Josuke can still save Koichi, so he fights Okuyasu. When he smashes the sign, Josuke realizes that Okuyasu's stand's right hand can completely erase anything it touches. He can also bring people nearer or farther from himself, which he uses to bring Josuke close and punch him. He then tries to pull Josuke, but he dodges and accidentally pulls the statue, which knocks him out. Josuke looks and sees that Koichi has been taken away, so he goes in. The archer is waiting for him with Koichi. He says that his arrow is precious to him and pulls it out, causing Koichi to get hurt even more. He then says that Koichi was unchosen. Josuke is about to move ahead, but Okuyasu comes behind him. Suddenly, something attacks Josuke and he dodges, which ends up hitting Okuyasu. Josuke hides behind a wall. The archer does not care that his brother is about to die. So, Josuke takes his body away while constantly getting hit with the attack. He asks what the archer's stand is in exchange for healing him, but Okuyasu does not reveal his brother's secret. 
Still, Josuke restores Okuyasu's body and heals him. Okuyasu is confused and asks why he did that. And Josuke says that there's no great reason, he just wanted to help. He then goes to save Koichi, leaving Okuyasu to contemplate on what just happened. Josuke goes back upstairs. The archer is not there and Koichi is still struggling to live. Just then, Okuyasu arrives. Josuke gets ready to fight him, but Okuyasu erases the table and pulls Koichi. Josuke quickly heals him and Okuyasu says that they are even now and in the future, he won't help Josuke. Josuke smiles. Suddenly, hundreds of small soldiers come down with parachutes and helicopters and shoot at them. The little army descends onto the battlefield and attacks Josuke, but Josuke uses his stand to fight back. Suddenly, Koichi also sees one of the helicopters, meaning he has also become a stand user. The archer comes and reveals his name as Nijimura Keicho and his stand Bad Company. Keicho then says that Koichi was apparently chosen. Keicho uses Bad Company to stab him on his foot and Koichi releases a giant egg. Keicho then commands Bad Company to attack and Josuke uses Crazy Diamond to fight back against the army, but gets seriously hurt and collapses to the ground. Seeing this, Koichi gets angry and releases his stand, while also getting his anime hairstyle. His stand is a weird creature that struggles to do anything. Just then, Josuke sits up and says this plan has been set up. He restores the missiles from earlier and shoots down Keicho. Bad Company disappears. He then thanks Koichi for giving him time, but when they look back, Keicho had disappeared. They go upstairs and inside they find a weird looking creature. Keicho says that that is his father. He says that his father was a scum who abused his own sons. Josuke offers to heal him, but Keicho laughs and says that he actually wants to kill his father, but his father has somehow become immortal. His father cannot remember anything, not even how he was a human once, but only plays around with a box. Keicho wants to give his father a normal death to end his suffering. They open the father's box and Josuke restores a picture that was in it, their family picture. Keicho's father takes it and starts crying. Seeing this, Keicho starts crying as well. Josuke then asks for the bow and arrow so that he can destroy them, but Keicho does not hand it over. Even Okuyasu comes and tries to convince him, but to no avail. Just then, a strange noise is heard and suddenly something breaks in and attacks them. It goes for Okuyasu, but Keicho pushes him away and gets hit. When he turns around, the stand stares back out of his mouth and explodes. After that, it escapes. The three rush outside, but it's nowhere to be seen. Okuyasu is heartbroken and says that while his brother deserved such an end, he still saved Okuyasu. Upstairs, his father holds the family photo. Sometime later, Josuke tells Jotaro everything. Josuke is convinced that the mysterious stand user will come back again. He then says that the Jo in Josuke means to protect and it was a name given by his grandfather. He then vows to continue protecting the town like his grandfather did. Later, Koichi does not stop for Yukako and she actually smiles at him. Good job! He, Okuyasu and Josuke walk together after greeting Angelo the Rock. In post credits, we see a hand in a bag holding the arrow. And that is where the movie ends with potential for a future sequel. Watch another movie displayed on the screen. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.